Have you ever felt bad for photographing an iconic location? I've been part of the landscape photography community for more than a decade now, and I have heard many different opinions. Some strong, even demeaning, such as you are a bad photographer if you are photographing iconic locations. And that is, in my opinion and experience, as far from the truth as you can get. Arguably some of my best and favorite photos have been those from the iconic locations and I do enjoy returning to them again and again. However, first, let me start out by saying that copying photos from famous locations one-to-one -one is a terrible way of learning to compose your photos. You will basically just be copying other people's work and you will be taking the photo without knowing why the photo works in the first place. That might be good for the glory on social media, but it doesn't give you a whole lot of honor. Secondly, it's also important for me to emphasize that you do not have to photograph famous locations. There are both good and bad reasons to photograph iconic locations, and as usual, it's not the false dichotomy of either or, but a big both and. In this video, I'll give you seven reasons to photograph the iconic locations, so without further ado, let's get started. Iconic locations are iconic for a reason. That might be for historical or aesthetic reasons, but often a combination. To me, that in itself is both inspirational and motivational. The location provides a subject with which most people attribute some kind of value. That makes them worth visiting and photographing. For a little Dane like myself, visiting the Golden Gate, the tunnel view in Yosemite Valley, Monument Valley, the impressive redwoods of California, Kirkjufell in Iceland, the beautiful hills in Tuscany, the characteristic mountains in the Dolomites, or the dramatic sea cliffs in the Faroe Islands is a huge thing because I, as a human, put value into these locations. For a landscape photographer, it feels like attending a concert with your favorite band. That makes it all worth it. The landscapes simply inspire me. If I didn't attribute this kind of value to the landscapes, I would never have gone to Iceland in 2015, a trip that kickstart my path from portrait photography into landscape photography. If I had not been inspired by the behind the scenes for photographing the world with Elia Locardi by F Stoppers to go to Iceland on my own for three weeks, I would probably not have become the landscape photographer I am today. If I hadn't been inspired by all the beautiful landscape photos on Instagram and 500 pixels from now very famous locations, I wouldn't have become the landscape photographer I am today. And of course, if I hadn't been inspired by the first landscape photographers on YouTube, like Thomas Heaton and Joshua Cripps, not to say that they photograph the most famous locations, but if I hadn't got that inspiration, I would definitely not have been the landscape photographer I am today. There are many arguments against photographing iconic locations, and I think the main resentment comes from the feeling of being unoriginal. I would, however, argue that uniqueness and originality does on itself not equate to a good landscape photo. At most of the iconic locations, you really have to think outside the box if you want to create a unique take on a well-photographed scene and come away with a new composition that the rest of the landscape photography community has not seen before. That challenge seems daunting to some people, but if you are up for it and you succeed, it can be a very rewarding feeling. Another thought on this is how much difference is required for a photo to be considered original. I recently went to Torres del Paine National Park in Patagonia. Thanks so much for all the kind comments on that video. And I knew it would be hard to come up with anything original as it's a very well photographed park and very restricted in regard to moving outside the trails. So I threw that idea out the window and simply went to photograph the most iconic viewpoint in the park. Why? because it just looks so good. <laughs> However, by returning to the same location several times, we not just got some absolutely incredible light, we also started exploring the area a bit more and started looking beyond the viewpoint and boardwalk and started to integrate other foregrounds like the dead trees and reflections closer to the foreground lake. Depth and reflections are compositional tools I cover in my eBooks on composition. Both eBooks are easy to read, with minimal text and loads of examples. There are links to both the free light versions and the full versions in the description of the video. So reason number three is an extension of reason number one and two, and that is to shoot for yourself for your own happiness and entertainment. Most photographers do not aspire to becoming a full-time landscape photographer and making a career out of it. They photograph for the sake of photographing, making their own art, pleasure and leisure, just like any other hobby or interest. When that is the goal, there are absolutely no reason 
not to photograph the iconic locations if you are attracted to them. Well, maybe beside the crowds, they can be annoying, but I'll return to that later. And reason number four, it is only in the landscape photography community and other subculture communities that many of these locations have been photographed to death. Outside our community, the famous landmarks have been seen before, but not many people have seen the best photos from there. It is easy for you to do better than what most non-photographers have seen from the famous locations. The lesser known locations to the general public, such as Kirkjufell, Skåafoss, Stocksnes, Hamnoy, the Yellow Cabin at Sakrasoy, Uttercliff Beach, just to mention a few from Iceland and Norway, haven't even been seen by most people, even here, many years later, into the trend of landscape photography. My brother still looks like a big question mark when I ask him what Kirkjufell is. And that is even though there are many more photos of these locations than ever before. Our community of landscape photographers is relatively small and our photos basically drown in selfies, baby and cat photos and the relentless stream of reels and memes on social media. There is no way my photo displaying the gorgeous northern lights above Kirkjufell can compete with my friend's newborn baby, marriage or political statement concerning popularity or attention on the social medias. And nor should it. Humans are fine-tuned to love kittens, puppies, babies, and with the world in shambles, we also want to share a little bit of fun through the memes and reels. Beautiful nature can wait. And on to point number five. The really, really iconic locations are famous, which makes them relatable to non-photographers. People love something they can relate to. This gives a bigger chance of likes, engagement, shares, and reach, which in our age of social media could potentially lead to money if you know how to leverage it. A great photo of the Eiffel Tower would probably do better than a great photo of Kirkjufell, and that would probably again do better than a great photo of somewhere even less well known. If you are in the business of landscape photography, photos of relatable subjects are what get your potential customers inside the door. From there, you can start selling them the more sophisticated and refined photos. Likewise, although some photographers don't like iconic photos in the social media feed, in my experience, the photos of the iconic locations has a tendency to perform either better or as good as non-famous locations, and it is most likely because they're relatable to other photographers. The sixth reason to photograph famous and iconic locations is if you approach it from a learning perspective and doesn't just copy the photos of other photographers, you can actually learn a lot. It was a big part of my learning curve as a landscape photographer to figure out why a specific composition was composed as it was. And if you apply a bit of critical thinking and look around, you may actually find a more optimal way to compose the specific location. In that way, you may stand on the shoulders of those who came before you, but by applying the same thinking as they did in combination with your own in a non-famous location, you may actually end up creating original work. The skills and thinking I have acquired in the process of learning landscape photography are some I now apply to my local landscapes in Denmark, a country that is not known for its abundance of famous landscape photography locations. And if I am in a famous area or at an iconic location, I have the confidence to try something more original. And it's of course also important to emphasize that editing makes your photos stand out from other photographers. It is in many circumstances actually through the editing process that you can further distinguish yourself from photographers. And if you want to learn how to edit your photos, there is a discount code and a link for my big 30 plus videos editing course down in the description of the video. It is in this course I share all my editing techniques along with 11 start to finish tutorials and my philosophy around editing. If you already use Lightroom, it is only a benefit as the raw converter to Photoshop has the same editing algorithm as Lightroom. As mentioned, there is a link and a coupon code in the description of the video. The last good reason to photograph famous locations is you'll likely meet many like-minded photographers and videographers. If you're into all the social stuff called interaction, you may end up meeting some really great new people and potentially friends and maybe even clients. It is usually really fun to meet all the other crazy people who defy the early hours just to get the perfect light. You might both learn something and get some tips on other great locations. Engage with the community and make new friends. 
The occasions where I always end up talking with others are at Stocksnes or the Ice Beach in Iceland, not to mention the famous farmhouses in Tuscany. They are all very popular areas, and you can be sure that many of the people who are there are probably other landscape photographers. If you want to learn more about landscape photography, definitely check out all my other videos here on the channel and my ebooks and post processing course, and subscribe to my newsletter for notifications on new videos, products, and workshop announcements. See you next time.